Hello everyone, it's Edwin here, Pretty Green Vinyl Guy. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm going to follow up on a thread that I've seen some people uh, posting videos. I think Melissa Murphy was the first, and I saw Mazzy did one. And it's about uh, our original master recordings. So I do have some that are a little bit different. I don't have a lot. So I'm going to bend the rules a bit, and I'm also going to add my CBS Half Speed Mastered into this to make it a little bit of a video, but I do have some that weren't shown uh, by everyone. And the first one I'm going to show is Al Stewart, The Year of the Cat. Probably his most uh, famous album. Nice uh, album here with all the lyrics on the inside and of course the famous artwork. I forget who did this. And um, yeah, this is, uh, of course, sounds fantastic. And where are we at here? Oh, crap. The label's a little different as far as it has a... Looks like a sunset on it. And uh, we all know the song, The Year of the Cat, but there's many great songs on this. You know? Uh, Great lyrics. I mean, you could just read the lyrics and you would be very, very pleased. Speaking of great lyrics, we got some uh, Dylan, Blood on Tracks. This is the original master recording, of course. Uh, this one has a number. Does the Al Stewart one do? No. So yeah, this is Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. This one's uh, 14,002. Um, yeah, what can you say? Blood on Tracks. I mean, my favorite Dylan album. Most people's, I would say, argumentatively. Um, nice also with the gatefold. Do have a little crack there, which is kind of a shame. And this one's also complete. They did this inner a lot of the times it showed other music you could buy. And this one's on the more traditional label, the black. That, that sounds fantastic. Now another one that I had that I didn't see anybody show was uh, Crime of the Century. Brilliant album by a band that, you know, if they're going to have a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, how can these guys not be in it? It's un unbelievable. You know, two of the biggest albums of the 70s, you know, this, and I've actually got the other one on uh, MoFi. Um, when I was Googling quite a bit about, because unfortunately most people think Mobile Fidelity, these are got to be the best sounding records of, of these artists because their MoFi, we're paying, you know, upwards of $100 usually, and they're not always the best sounding. Um, I did have Dark Side of the Moon, because that is my ultimately favorite album of all time, and I was disappointed. I actually ended up selling it, and I did have Abbey Road, which is probably my number two favorite album of all time, and I ended up selling it because... I have other pressings. Um, I think for Dark Side, I have the original Japanese is brilliant. And I have the 40th anniversary, I think is brilliant. And for Abbey Road, I have a second press UK. And I have a, well, we have the Giles Martin, uh, which, you know, for argument's sake, does sound amazing. Um, I also have a UK no, sorry, a Japanese from the 70s set, mid-70s flag series. I think that sounds really good. Um, I didn't think the MoFi stood up. Now, interestingly, when you Google best-sounding MoFi Mobile Fidelity albums, this comes up as maybe the best-sounding one. And it does sound amazing. I mean, I don't have an audiophile system. I have a, you know, above average probably, but I certainly don't have, you know... And this does sound really good, and this is a terrific album from start to finish. And yeah, if you can, if you see this, grab it. 
Um, it's on got their A and M label, just like the standard album. Another one that gets a lot of praise for its quality and sound is another one of my favorite albums, which is why I bought these. I didn't buy them because they're MoFi. I'm buying these because they are albums that I cherish and I love to listen to. Remind me of a lot of things in my life from the past. And what can you say about T for the Tillerman? Cat Stevens. I remember hearing this for the first time. I'd never heard of Cat Stevens. This is, I think my dad had it. And I was just going through his records one day. Oh, let's see what this sounds like. And I was like, holy crap. Um, you know, Where Did the Children Play? Hard-Headed Woman. Wild World, Sad Lisa, Father and Son. It's just wow. Um, and this sounds amazing. And that's on the A&M label. So yeah, Cat Stevens, Tea for the Tillerman. This is probably my favorite album by this band. This is The Stones. This is Sticky Fingers. The zipper isn't real, but it's kind of like got a raised uh, material on it. And uh, again, uh, sounds very good. There's the label. Yeah, I mean, what can you say about Sticky Fingers? It's, um, like I say, arguably my favorite Stones album. Um, I love the rawness of Sticky Fingers. And uh, it's got the Sound Lab inner on that one. This one's advertising the Beatles. And then, yeah, back to Super Tramp. This was a new one that came out last year. I haven't, most of these I've bought used. Um, these last two are ones that I bought brand new. So, Breakfast in America. Again, just the amazing follow up. And, you know. Gone Hollywood, The Logical Song, Goodbye Stranger, Breakfast in America, Oh Darling, Take the Long Way Home. It's like a greatest hits in one album. Absolutely phenomenal. I think that's got sort of a combo of the Super Tramp. And you can see that through the, of the black Mobile Fidelity label and the Super Tramp logo. Gotta get my face in that at the same level. If you can't see it, trust me. And then the other one that I bought new was uh, Grateful Dead. This is the original master recording of American Beauty. This is a great uh, packaged. You can see that Mobile Fidelity has certainly upped the packaging since the first you know, releases. Again, this comes with that inner with all of the other ones you could own on both sides. Many of which are... I guess that's the thing too about the MoFi's is once they run out, they run out, right? So it does make them a bit more of a collector. Um, they're, if you're into, want to get into investing, um, in music for something maybe to resell down the line, these would be a good investment if you can find them, you know, and if they sound good. You know, certainly just because it's a MoFi, um, maybe they haven't been looked after. Um, that was partially what happened with my a Pink Floyd one that I had was that I even sent it away to get um, the, you know, the clean where they do the shaking and it came back a bit better, but it, it wasn't to the quality um, of sound, so I ended up, yeah. But there you go, American Beauty. So that's my original master recordings, my MoFi collection. And then I have a few on the CVS Mastered Sound. Um, again, if you're collecting these do hold their value um, a bit more and of course not every artist 
is on a MoFi original master recording. Um, so maybe some of your favorite artists are on this uh, CBS. Do these sound good? Yes, they do. Um, they're not generally made um, much. I don't. I think I have read that these are virgin vinyl, the lacquer, or the the vinyl product, meaning that it wasn't another record at some point that was remelted down. And um, I think they do sound good. There's the uh, all the info, the technical with the frequencies, and um, you know, it shows it went from a microphone to a mixing console, analog, digital converter, digital tape recorder, digital to analog converter, lacquered master, metal master, mother stampers, and the pressing. Um, as one of the oldest record companies and the inventors of 33 and 3rd RPM, Microgroove LP, CBS Records has long been the forefront of technical innovation. Our result is a master series the record industry's first multifaceted and integrated premium quality product line designed for the most critical and demanding listeners. Huh, you know, I've never read that. Maybe I should have. <laughs> but these are half speed mastered. So we have ELO's Greatest Hits. Uh, yeah, that's a good album. That you can just listen to over and over again. We have a bit of Canadian here. Not a lot of people know who uh, Bruce, Co Bruce Coburn. Um, Dancing in the Dragon's Jaw. Bruce Coburn is a Canadian singer, songwriter, folksy, but he does have does do some rocky songs. Um, very, very, very good guitar player. Like if you want to hear some great acoustic guitar playing, um, Bruce Coburn is awesome. It's funny because I'll see Americans call him Bruce Cockburn. It's Coburn. And um, this is probably his most famous, um, you know, or commercially successful album in, in Canada, because that's his, his base. Um, this has a song called Wondering Where the Lines Are. If you look that up on YouTube, you probably will recognize it. Um, he had another great song. It's not on this album. It's If a Tree Falls in the Forest, Does Anybody Hear It? And he also wrote the Bare Naked Ladies' first hit. They, he didn't write it for them. They took it from him. Uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Time, uh, which is one of my favorite all-time songs. So yeah, Bruce Coburn, fantastic stuff. And then, um, Mazzy, if you're watching, I got one for you here. We got uh, Billy Joel, The Stranger. Um, arguably... You know, I can take and leave Billy Joel. I have seen him in concert. He's fantastic live. My wife and I saw him in Madison Square Garden when our daughter was living in New York. And she didn't even want to go. I just bought the tickets one day and said, we're going to see Billy Joel tonight. And she's like, really? And when we were walking out, she grabbed my hand and she said, you know, that was amazing. Um, but two records that every everybody should have. The Stranger, 52nd Street. That's what you need. And this sounds amazing. This is in brilliant shape. I bought this used and it's it's like brand new. It's got the Columbia Red Label um, with the insert. And um, yeah, just a fantastic album. Nothing wrong with this album at all. And sticking with Americana. Now this one come came with this factory sealed uh, bag, which I'm assuming that's what they all would have came in originally. This is the only one I have that's in this. Uh, factory sealed master sound. This is uh, Darkness on the Edge of Town. The boss. I'm not going to take it out. Um, yeah, Badlands. Great album. A young rockin' Bruce Springsteen. If you haven't seen the film um, Blinded by the Light, about the young English guy growing up in 1970s or 1980s um, England, 
Uh, fantastic little movie if you got some free time in your hands. And my last has to be mastered is uh, Wish You Were Here, Pink Floyd. Again, uh, when I googled what was some of their best sounding uh, listens, this comes up, uh, I think, top of the list. So yeah, Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. I mean, if you're going to hear a sound, if you want to hear an album that sounds crystal clear, this has got to be one of them, right? I think, well, there goes that. <laughs> Whew! Caught it before it hit the floor. Uh, shine on you crazy diamond. Uh, wish you were here. Have a cigar. Welcome to the machine. So yeah, that's my um, almost damage-free MoFi collection. And um, yeah. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'm glad I did have something a little different to show. And uh, take care, everybody. Have a great day.